my name is Tina. And I'm Steven. And we're excited to welcome you to Timberlake Online Church today. We're so excited to get into the second week of our new series, The New Normal. Let's get going. We want to know if this is your first time joining us for church here at Timberlake. If this is your first time, we'd love to know. That way we can give you a free gift. Go to the Facebook comments and comment the word connect, and that way someone will be in touch with you to get you your free gift. Free. As you prepare for today's service, here's a few tips on how to make the most of your experience. First, turn off all your devices and any other possible distractions. Second, try to stream on the largest screen you have in your home. Third, gather your family all in the same place for worship. And last, sing along and have fun worshiping. And even now, it's okay if you can't sing. No one can hear you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we are thrilled for some new online events this week. We're going to be announcing those tonight on our Facebook page. Make sure to keep an eye out so you stay informed on the new events that are going to be happening during the week. I heard there might be some trivia involved. Trivia? What? <laughs> That's exciting. Yep. We'd love to know who's worshiping with you today. Maybe it's your spouse, your kids, your boyfriend or girlfriend, or your furry friends like us. Comment below and tell us who's watching with you. We'll be watching with these two and their stinky breath. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today for online worship. We're gonna start the countdown in just a second. We'll be back shortly. everyone, we need you to do us a favor. Go down there and click the share button. That way your friends can join in. We're stronger when we're part of a community. We know there are some people that are new to Timberlake who want to have a chance to get to know us, maybe ask some questions about our mission. That's why Pastor Matt is hosting an online The Warm Up today at 11 a.m. If you comment the word Zoom below, you'll get an invite so that you can join. That way you can ask any questions you have or just chit chat with Pastor Matt. Last time you heard from us, we were debating on whether or not a hot dog was a sandwich. It is a sandwich. It is a sandwich. Well, now we have a hot new debate. Is a chicken nugget a meatball? Yes. It's a ball of meat. It depends on the restaurant. In what restaurant is a chicken nugget not a ball of meat? Uh, no free advertisements. Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>
you know, this is a terrible, terrible situation for a lot of people. Uh, but for me, but for me, it's not that bad. It really is just an inconvenience. I can't do the things I, I want to do. Some of them, I can't really go the places I want to go or see all the people that I want to see. Um, but otherwise, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm healthy and my needs are being provided for and uh, the people I love are, are well taken care of. And so um, that has been a good attitude adjustment for me, you know, to, um, to be aware that um, as annoying as this is, as frustrating as the situation is, it's really not actually that bad for me. Um, it, it's an inconvenience. And so I have an opportunity then uh, to serve and to bless people for whom this is much worse than an inconvenience. I have an opportunity to reach out to them and to serve them and to help them um, who are going through a very difficult time. Steven. And I'm Tina. Welcome back. Your service today will have a time of worship, scripture reading, prayer, as well as a great message from Pastor Matt continuing our series, The New Normal. We want to know if this is your first time joining us for church here at Timberlake. If this is your first time, we'd love to know. That way we can give you a free gift. Go to the Facebook comments and comment the word connect and that way someone will be in touch with you to get you your free gift. Free. As you prepare for today's service, here's a few tips on how to make the most of your experience. First, turn off all your devices and any other possible distractions. Second, try to stream on the largest screen you have in your home. Third, gather your family all in the same place for worship. And last, sing along and have fun worshiping. And even now, it's okay if you can't sing. No <laughs> one can hear you. That's true. <laughs> we want to invite you to take part in our new daily devotional, Rooted, where you can get great content from our pastors and leaders. You can find it on our website at www.timberlakeumc.org. Later in the service, there'll be a time for offering. You can either give by text, online, or you can mail a check. Generosity helps us in our mission to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We thank you for your generosity. We are thrilled for some new online events this week. We're going to be announcing those tonight on our Facebook page. Make sure to keep an eye out so you stay informed on the new events that are going to be happening during the week. I heard there might be some trivia involved. Trivia, what? <laughs> That's exciting. Yep. We know there are some people that are new to Timberlake who want to have a chance to get to know us, maybe ask some questions about our mission. That's why Pastor Matt is hosting an online The Warm Up today at 11 a.m. If you comment the word Zoom below, you'll get an invite so that you can join. That way you can ask any questions you have or just chit chat with Pastor Matt. Last time you heard from us, we were debating on whether or not a hot dog was a sandwich. It is a sandwich. It is a sandwich. Well, now we have a hot new debate. Is a chicken nugget a meatball? Yes. It's a ball of meat. It depends on the restaurant. In what restaurant is a chicken nugget not a ball of meat? Uh, no free advertisements. Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>
Romans 8, uh, you know, Paul talks about the, the groaning of creation, uh, like, a, like a woman going through childbirth as we wait for what is to come. So I know sometimes there's some groaning, right? And, and we feel that deep in our souls, like, oh God, can't this please get better? Friends, it will get better. It will get better. But let me challenge you to ask yourself, is this uh, truly a matter of suffering for you? And if it is, then please ask for help. Um, if not, if it's really more simply of an inconvenience, then uh, remind yourself of that and see if there's someone you might serve and help and bless during this time. We need you to do us a favor. Go down there and click the share button. That way your friends can join in. We're stronger when we're part of a community. We know there are some people that are new to Timberlake who want to have a chance to get to know us, maybe ask some questions about our mission. That's why Pastor Matt is hosting an online The Warm Up today at 11 a.m. If you comment the word Zoom below, you'll get an invite so that you can join. That way you can ask any questions you have or just chit chat with Pastor Matt. tune in to join us for service today. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the second Sunday of the new normal. Welcome to worship. This is Timberlake United Methodist Church and my name is Pastor Brad. Thank you so much for gathering with us for this service. Friends, in John chapter four, verse 23, the Bible says, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. We are here to worship God in spirit and in truth. And yes, we are not in the building, but we are together spiritually and we are together surrounded by the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Happy Easter to you and thank you for tuning in with us. Let me encourage you to give this worship service your full attention. Just because we may be dressed casually and in our living rooms or on the couch doesn't mean we have to treat God casually. God is here to meet with us for this time. If you're a guest, 
Welcome to Timberlake. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. I'm aware some of you are tuning in for the first time. Some of you have never even been inside our building. How wonderful for us to be able to connect with you in this way. And so if you're new, let me ask you, please go down to the comments and type the word connect in the comments. So we would love to know that you have been with us. We wanna share some information with you about Timberlake Church. We want you to know Timberlake is a church for all people of all ages and of all stages on the journey of faith. So if you're new, go to the comments and comment the word connect so that we can know that you have been with us. Thank you so much. We're gonna follow up with you and we're gonna give you everything that you need in order to see whether Timberlake is a good fit for you. Friends, welcome to worship. Let's worship God together. Please join us in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join us for our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
This is our mission moment. Our mission at Timberlake is to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And some of our Timberlake people are being the hands of Jesus in a wonderful way by making masks to help people stay healthy during this pandemic. There's two groups in particular that are part of Timberlake Church that are making masks. One is Cindy Dolan and Patty Kane from the Bonnie Harris United Methodist Women's Circle. And the other is Marsha Marple and the Peacemakers. Cindy has made over 130 masks herself, plus the masks that the other ladies in her group are making. These masks are being given for patients and visitors at Central Hospital, for staff at medical offices, and even the volunteers at our own food pantry. One HIV patient who received a mask uh, from one of her batches was so pleased to receive a ninja style because the surgical mask that the hospital had given him did not fit well over his beard. Currently, Cindy and the others are working on a large order for our HIV positive community that receive their services through the Community Access Network and their downtown clinic. Cindy said donations of fabric and of thread and of elastic are welcome. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Patty and your circle for all of this wonderful work. I'm also excited, friends, to tell you about the Peacemakers, a group of 16 Timberlake women who meet weekly for Bible study and for prayer. They make quilts for people who are hospitalized or sick, and they also make tactile quilts for children who are blind. When their in-person meetings became a problem because of this coronavirus, the ladies took to making masks from their homes. And about once a week, they collect all the masks at the church for distribution to hospice, to the Rustburg Detention Center, to Generation Solutions, and to the hospital. And so far, this group has made over 700 masks. Friends, we celebrate the mission of our church and the work that these ladies are doing in the name of Jesus. Just like the crucifixion did not stop Jesus from his mission in the world, the coronavirus will not stop us. Every day we experience resurrection and new life through Jesus Christ. If you are willing to help, if you're willing to contribute, we're gonna invite you to give now financially to the mission and the ministry of Timberlake. There are three ways that you can give. You can give through the website, you can give through text to give, or you can give by mailing in a check to the church building. And we're gonna put on the screen now details about how you can contribute. Friends, thank you for your financial gifts that makes our ministry possible. morning, Timberlake. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come to you with open hearts today, Lord, asking for the Holy Spirit to fall and to fill us this morning. Lord God, we know that we're not in control. God, we turn to you, God, in the shelter of your safe arms to seek the peace and the quiet that we've been looking for. God, we ask you for your mercy and your comfort Lord, pour out the Holy Spirit so that we might feel your presence with us in this very moment. God, I pray that we would just see a revival, Lord, in our own hearts. God, as a, as a church body, in our community, our state, our nation, and God globally, Lord. May your name be glorified in all that we see and all that we do in the coming days. God, we know this time has not been easy for so many of us. Lord, and you remind us continually of your provision. God, you speak to us through your scriptures. You promise us that the hope is in you, Lord. And though we may be adopted into your family, we will also be glorified with you, Lord, 
but there will also be suffering. And so, God, I ask that you would just be so near to those that are suffering today, Lord, not just from mere inconvenience, but maybe just an internal suffering, Lord, of loneliness or feeling lost. God, maybe there's someone that's listening to this and they don't know you, God. I pray that those that don't know you would come to you, Lord, that you would give them a longing to know new life through you. God, I pray that we would just seek the stillness of you in our souls, Lord, and that we would listen to you and we would rest in you. God, as we grow weary of this new rhythm that we're living today, may we look for the understanding of you and your timing. And may we be faithful in our prayer, patient in our times of uncertainty and questions, and God, joyful in the hope of you. So Lord, we now ask you to fortify us with the grace of you, of your Holy Spirit, and to give us peace this day that can only be found through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, Timberlake Church, this is Pastor Matt, and I want to welcome you to the time in our service that we're able to open the scriptures together and read what God has revealed to us. If you would, turn with me to Romans chapter 8 in your Bible. Mark your space. We'll return there in just a moment to Romans chapter 8. Now, take a breath. Inhale, exhale. Take a moment to get comfortable. Fluff up the pillow. Get a hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of cocoa, whatever your choice. And close your eyes and open up your imaginations. Picture the Garden of Eden. The earth in all of its perfection. The grass grows as if it were a soft carpet under the feet of Adam and his wife Eve. The wind blows around and blankets them with comfort and joy. The sun casts beams of light that dance like a million fireflies upon the waters of the lakes and the rivers provided for their recreation and enjoyment. Every animal attending to the work of fruitfulness and bounty in creation as they worship their creator in their own dance of adoration. All things are perfect. All things are good. There is no death. Everything is perfect. Now, open your eyes. The story makes a a sharp turn when the serpent enters the garden and invites God's children to do the one thing they were asked not to do. Eve and Adam both willingly eat of the forbidden fruit, and everything in an instant changes. Unreal broken state of misery enters in. Suffering and pain are the reality. The grass becomes bristly. The wind becomes cold. The light becomes blistering, and the waters rage. And every animal falls prey to the now ever-evolving circle of life. Everything is corrupted. Humanity has learned what evil is. Death is now a very present reality. All things have been corrupted by this thing called sin. God then curses his creation and exiles his children out of the garden and into a world filled with trials and toil. Now, if you're a critic of God and have a hard heart toward him, you you might view the way God deals with the sin of eating the fruit as a type of overreaction on his part. I mean, come on, God, is the act of eating a fruit really that big of a deal? Does one act of disobedience warrant the present conditions of suffering and pain that we see in the world today? The idea of suffering is a large reason why many people in our culture choose not to believe in God. They ask, why would a good God allow all this bad to happen. Welcome to week two of our series, The New Normal, the third Sunday in Easter. 
In our series, we are looking at our current situation of social distancing and pandemic and asking the questions, is there any good news to be heard? Is there hope to be seen? In a recent interview, actor and comedian Jerry Seinfeld interviewed one of another one of his uh, contemporary people, Ricky Gervais, on his show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. In their conversation, the idea of praying comes up. Ricky, who is a self-proclaimed atheist, tells Jerry that people have accursed him and accused him of arrogance because he doesn't pray. His response is where many people are in life, and Gervais says, what could be more arrogant than praying to the God who didn't stop the Holocaust, thinking that he will help you find your car keys? For Gervais and many others, the idea of a good God cannot compensate for the suffering that they see before them in the present and past world events. The depth of sorrow and suffering that some have walked through in this life have blinded their eyes to the beauty and goodness of God. On a varying degree, all of us in our present circumstances allow those things to overshadow the future glory that is to come. We are tempted to allow our current miseries to overwhelm our promised futures. In Romans 8, 17, the Apostle Paul speaks of the certainty of our suffering with Christ as part of our connection with him. See, knowing what Christ went through, especially the days right before his crucifixion, we might be tempted to question whether the suffering of following Christ is worth it. Maybe living in and serving our own flesh is a better way after all. But Paul kills this idea by stating that our present battle against our sinful flesh is nothing in comparison to the glory that awaits us. See, suffering sounds so threatening from our perspective, and, and it is. But if we exchange our short-term view for an eternal perspective, we will see that what lies in store for us, what God has for us, and we will have no doubt that no matter what we experience in this lifetime, it will be worth it in the long run. That takes us to our scripture for today. And as I said and reminded you, we'll be in Romans 8. So hopefully you have that ready. So if you would turn with me there and follow me as I read verses 18 through 28. Again, that's Romans chapter 8, 18 through 28. Paul says this, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy of comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we will wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For many years, I had the honor of teaching and equipping young men and women from all over the world to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ into South Asia. We would spend three months in intense training and in preparation for three months of outreach to some of the hardest and closed off countries of the world. Over the 12 years of leading teams, I learned that there was one thing that separated effective teams from lesser effective teams. The teams that chose to embrace the situational inconveniences of, say, bathing in cold rivers with cattle upstream, having limited access to luxuries like beds and toilet paper, 
and having to eat cultural specific foods like dog and insects. Yum. Would be the teams that would, those would be the teams that would return from their outreach locations with amazing stories of God's faithfulness. See, the team's fruitfulness came from their willingness to embrace the hardships of their current situations and turn every grumble into thanksgiving and praise. They were able to proclaim the goodness of God in the midst of their perception of suffering because they were able to focus on the future glory of God. Stephen Rung says this, if we focus only on the present, everything can seem pointless. But creation was subjected to sin in hope, in anticipation of something more to come. That comes out of verse 20, out of our scripture today. In verse 21, Paul reminds us that just as the sons and daughters of God await the redemption of their fallen bodies, so too does all creation await its restoration to God's plan. If we look around, we see that the death and decay we experience as a consequence of sin affects everything around us. God never intended creation or us to suffer. The effects we see in our lives and throughout the world have been brought about by sin. So another aspect of condemning and removing sin involves removing it from the world. In fact, Paul says creation itself groans with longing for that day of redemption perhaps even more than we do. Rather than whining about our suffering, we should anticipate the glory that lies ahead. Paul transitions from the creation's longing to our own, a longing for the day when the battle with our sin and our sinful flesh will finally be over. In that day, that great day, our redeemed inner person, we will have a redeemed and glorified body as well. So from the inside out, Redemption will have come. See, the indwelling of God's spirit is a preview of what lies ahead for us. We too should be groaning in anticipation, not grumbling about the suffering that lies between now and eternity. When we enter into heaven, our adoption will be made complete. We will be restored to our intended and original state. It will be a new type of Eden, the Apostle Paul speaks in verse 23 on our complete adoption as a redemption of our bodies. This is the completion of the process that God initiated when our Heavenly Father sent Jesus to bring us back to right standing before God through faith. Now, close your eyes once again. I want us to think about what life was like before the coronavirus. The ability to gather at church for worship together. For me, I, I miss walking down the aisle of the 830 service with Pastor Brad. I miss the feeling of hugging all of you, the firmness of handshakes from the gentlemen of our church, the intensity and intimacy of songs sung together in our 945 service, the commotion and laughter of our children, as well as the attempts to shh, quiet them as they enter back into worship for communion in our 11 o'clock service. Now, open your eyes. When we shift to how we are in, in our current state of shelter in place and our inability to meet together, we find a greater value upon what was. In our longing to get back to that place, I want to pose a question. What if, what if, we view our current situation of suffering as a measure of God's grace upon us to not long for what once was, but as an ability for God to quickly shape our lives for the greater things ahead of us. Again, if we view our current situation of suffering as a measure of God's grace upon us to not long for what we want and an ability for God to quickly shape our lives for the greater things ahead of us, what God wants. If we choose to open our eyes, we will see a choice placed before us. The one choice is to focus on our current suffering and to stay in the place of grumbling and complaint. This type of vision will only lead to anxiety, uncertainties, and fear. However, if we choose to embrace our suffering as a means of grace upon our lives, we will be able to open and see that our new normal is a place of innovation, hope, and progress. 
I'll end with this. In verse 28 of Romans 8, we see the Apostle Paul say, For those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. We must be careful to define what good is in ourselves. We should understand that God's purpose is what determines the definition of good. He calls us with specific purpose in mind, and we can have the utmost confidence that all these things we face, including our present suffering, are working together as part of a larger plan that God has intended to build his kingdom and to lead us into future glories in which no current suffering can even compare. When we hold on to the promises of the glories ahead, we open our eyes to see that God is always good, no matter the circumstances we temporarily endure. When we hold on to hope, we are able to proclaim, no matter what, that God is good. to see that everything he does for me is good God is good even when it's hard to see that everything he does for me is good yeah Lord you never said that living would be easy Lord you never said that truth
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. I hope you are encouraged. I want you to know that if you're suffering, if people you love are suffering, you are not alone. We are with you, but best of all, God is with you. Know that you are never ever alone because Christ is present and that in his suffering on the cross, he suffers with you. And by his resurrection, he overcomes illness and disease and even death itself to offer you new life. Friends, claim that new life in Jesus today. Share it with those around you and remember that God is with you now and forever.
May God bless you and fill you with every good thing this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen.